Hello guys and gals and welcome. So a little while ago um, I did a video about a puzzle and um, many of you took uh, part in the puzzle. Many of you chose not to. Uh, quite a few of you uh, tried and failed miserably, but one of you did succeed and you claimed the $1,000. Um, today uh, it's been long enough and I feel like it's time to go over the puzzle and solve it on camera for you guys and gals so that you can see that it was actually solvable. Um, and for those of you who may not have actually wanted to go through the process of solving the puzzle, well, I'm going to solve it for you. So you'll be able to see the entire story uh, whereas you may not have been able to see the entire story before. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the initial video. This is the initial video where I go over the first clue, which leads you to the next video. Hello, guys and gals, and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a puzzle. This is going to be what is known as a video challenge. Um, as you go forward through this story, you will find more videos. Those videos are not going to be listed, and you will not find them advertised anywhere. So the only way for you to know where they are is to solve the clues within the puzzle. When you solve the clues, it will take you to the next video, and the next video will give you more clues. Uh, I will be rewarding the winner of this contest $1,000. I decided that I really wanted to do something very fun with a very real prize at the end. And, uh, and I feel like this is exactly the way that I want to do it. So what I'm going to do next is read you a story. And this story is going to lead you to the next part of the puzzle. So listen closely as the Diablo is in the details. Our hero set off to find his fortune in gold. With a weapon in hand, armor buffed to a shine, and a shield that glowed with a golden luster, he set off with his trusty horse, Nimoy. He traveled east, always east, and eventually came across a small cave with runes around the entrance, carved directly into the stone. The runes were arranged thusly. On the left were the runes Io, Eld, Ohm, Thal, and Vex. On the right-hand side of the cave entrance were the runes Hull, Fal, and Nef. Now, our hero had not seen this configuration of runes before. He was very confident in his ability to create rune words in armor and weapons, but he had never seen them arranged quite like this. He was unsure what they meant or why they were arranged in such a way, but decided that any cave with runes carved on the outside might just have runes on the inside as well. Our warrior proceeded into the cave down a long corridor. <laughs> It was dark and foreboding, with many torches unlit along the walls. Our hero used the spell of Firebolt that he learned while traveling from a mage to light some of the torches, and to his surprise, he was in a vast room where light did not reach the ceiling. In his mind, it started to play tricks on him as to what could possibly be up there in the dark, waiting. In the center of this room was a pedestal with many runes carved along its surface. The runes were soul, hell, ith, foul, tear, ort, nef, el. There was no purpose to the runes that he could tell, but there was an arrow pointing back towards the entrance of the cave below the runes. Behind the pedestal on either side were two doors with stairs leading down. How far down, I could not tell. Both of them seemed to go on forever. Determined to see this through, I went back to the horse and got provisions. My torch 
and put Nimoy somewhere I hoped would keep him safe while I was gone. While I made preparations, it had gotten dark, and as I headed back into the mouth of the cave, I noticed that the runes on the outside of the door began to glow in the light of the moon. The runes were all glowing blue in the moonlight. I wondered what it meant, but wanted to head back inside to see what other secrets I could uncover. I felt as though I was on to something, if only I could uncover the secrets here. Once I was inside the door, I stood for a long time trying to figure out which door to take, the left door or the right door. Both seemed to lead down into the very bowels of the earth, and somehow I knew this choice was important. So this is the first puzzle um, in, in the series. And uh, there were a lot of clues that I wrote down while I was, uh, uh, you know, I already know the answers, but that doesn't matter. I'm still going to write down the clues. And uh, I have a notepad here. <clears throat> so the first clue was the uh, runes on the door above the door. Uh, we found out that it was I O L O M T H A L V E X. Uh, we also found out it was Paul Falneff. Now, if you take the time to try and figure out what these runes means, runes mean you're going to find nothing. Um, these runes don't mean anything in their current configuration. However, further in the cave, you find another set of runes right here. Uh, Sol, Hel, Ith, Fal, Tyr, Ort, Nef, El. Now, of course, that does not equal any kind of rune word. However, if you take the first letter from every single rune, you will come up with the term Shift 1. Now, Shift 1 is supposed to indicate to you that each of the runes have a number value assigned to them. And if you've played Diablo before, you would know that L is rune number 1. And Zod, for instance, is rune number 33. Um, you can look this up on the internet. It's not that hard to find. And, uh, and you could essentially find a list of all the runes. You could just simply type in list of runes D2R. And uh, I probably would recommend something like Ariat Summit, uh, which is going to have every single rune listed. Or you could go to uh, uh, the Wikipedia page is also pretty nice. Uh, the fandom.wikipedia, that one's pretty good too. Uh, that one actually has the numbers listed, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to assign each one of these a number value, uh, depending on what number they are. So uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't actually uh, take as much work as I'm putting into it here. It's actually easier. But uh, well, let's just go ahead and we'll do uh, IO is number 16. Uh, ELD is number 2. Uh, OM is number 27. THAL is number pink, 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 uh, number 10, and so forth and so on. And what you do is you continue down this, this road. You, you mark every single one of these with a, uh, a, a number. You don't actually have to write this down. You could just simply do it in your head if you've, uh, if you've got the, uh, the chutzpah, the chutzpah for it. And then what you do is you will translate out the runes. So shift one was supposed to represent the process of either shifting the runes, either one forward or one backward. So instead of being number 16, which is the IO rune, it would either be number 15, which is the Hell rune, or number 17, which is the, Lull, the Lum rune. All right, now if you take a look, um, I've actually given a clue to this already on the screen. So this is the first puzzle, and I wanted people to be able to pass this puzzle very easily. So as you can see, the Death rune word and the Wealth rune word are the two rune words that are listed here. Um, and if you see, the first rune in the death rune word is hell. So in this particular case, we're not going to be shifting forward. We're going to be shifting back. Um, so if we shift all of these runes one back, we will end up with hell, l, vex, ort, gull, which is the rune word death. Uh, Paul Falnef will also shift very nicely to lem, co, here. It's, uh, it's fairly easy, which Lemco Tier, if you look up the rune word for it, is the rune word Wealth. 
Now, to continue the puzzle from this point, what you're going to do is you're going to make a choice. As I said at the end of this uh, video, you have to make a choice, and which one of these choices you make is important. Uh, now, I'm going to choose the wrong way first, deliberately, uh, which is the death way. Obviously, death was supposed to be the clue that this was the wrong direction. Um, and if we go over to the death rune word video, you don't actually have to watch the video, by the way. Um, if you do, I mean, if you do, if you want to, you can, of course. But if you go down into the description of the death rune word video, you will find a rather conspicuous link right here uh, that says death and just has a link. When you click on the link, it's going to take you to an unlisted video. Let's take a look. After a long time of thinking and waiting, I made a decision. I would go down the left doorway first. I proceeded cautiously at first, but the stairs were sturdy and strong, and soon I became complacent as I traveled deeper and deeper into the mountain. The air became stale, and it was clear that no one had been down here for ages. My torch began to grow dim, and I feared I would be left in the dark. Finally, I came to the end of the stairs, and before me was a great archway that seemed to be made for something other than humans. As I made my way through the archway, I found myself in a small room with a wooden bowl on a pedestal. Inside the bowl were hundreds of runes, like those I used in my armor, except they were made of metal instead of stone. On the pedestal were five open slots that were the same size as the runes in the bowl. I could only guess that they wanted me to put the runes into the slots to solve a puzzle. Whoever went to this trouble of making this certainly didn't want outsiders in this place. I looked around, and the only clue I could find was written on the back of the pedestal again in runes. Bull Co. Eth, Zod, Tear, Shall, Shale, sorry, Ral, Co, Shale, Zod, Thal, Eld, and Dole. I sat and pondered for some time about what five runes to place in the slots, and what the runes on the back of the pedestal could mean. The more I tried to think of what runes to place, the more I began to dread what would happen if I was wrong. Alright, so in this puzzle, um, we are given another clue. Um, this particular clue, it revolves around the runes Thal, Ko, Eth, Zod, Tear, Shall, Sh shale, <laughs> Ral, Ko, Shale, Zod, Thal, Eld, Dole. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this doesn't represent something. Um, so we're going to try T, K, E. So this doesn't seem like it represents any kind of actual uh, word, right? So let's try shifting this over one to see if we can get anything out of it. Um, I do feel like it's a good idea, so let's um, let's assign some number values real quick. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to do that real quick so you don't have to so don't waste your time. All right, so here we go. We've got all the numbers um, translated out, and so now we're going to try and shift this either upward or downward um, in correspondence with the last puzzle. Um, the goal of my puzzles is to teach you how to do the next puzzle. Um, and in that way, sometimes even the way of death could represent a little bit of a learning so that you understand what it is that you need to do for the next part of the puzzle. Um, so Thal can either translate up to O or down to A. Now, A certainly seems like it could potentially be a word. Of course, O can be the start of a word, but I doubt it. Um, so let's focus on the up this time instead of the down. Um, so we have A. Co can rotate upward to F. Um, e and F can rotate upward to I. Hold on. Thal, Co... Well, that doesn't seem right. T. 
key. Tier goes to uh, N. Shale goes to... Am I missing a, um, a rune? It looks like I'm missing a rune. Thulco F. Thulco F. Zod. Well, I'm not missing a rune. It's interesting. I actually know what this is already, of course, so I'm going to type it in. Um, so it uh, it actually says a friend of death. Um, I don't know why I seem to have missed the R in there, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Uh, you should have still been able to uh, to to kind of figure out what it could possibly mean. Um, a friend of death. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I, I did uh, miss the R, but it doesn't really matter. It actually still translates out anyway. So uh, the goal here is to know what rune to put into the pedestal. Um, and the clue is a friend of death, um, or a fiend of death. <laughs> Either one actually works. Um, and where does that lead you? Well, what you want to do there is you want to look at a list of rune words. Um, so how many other rune words are there in the Diablo 2? Uh, if we take a look at a list of rune words in Diablo 2, you come across a rather long list. And what is another word, or another, another rune word, which could be similar to death, right? So we kind of have to figure out what could potentially be very similar to death. And uh, then we're going to have to go to that video to determine the next stage in the, in the process. Now, of course, you can take uh, guesses. You might not even be right. Um, I actually can't remember the precise one that I use, but there's a couple of rude words that could potentially be a friend of death. Uh, one that strikes me right off the get-go is grief. Uh, we're going to type in Ginger Gaming Mentor. And there is the grief rune word. So let's take a look down in the call, in the uh, description and let's see if the grief rune word is listed. Ah, look, we have another secret link. So this is uh, another secret link which takes us to the next stage in the puzzle. After standing for what felt like an eternity, I finally finally made an epiphany that the clue on the back of the pedestal was shifted. And if you took only the first letter of each rune, it read, A Friend of Death. With that clue in mind, I put in the word, or the rune word, grief. Using the same cipher, G for gull, R for ral, if for I, L for E, and Fal for F. With the last rune inserted, the pedestal began to violently shake and slowly began to retract into the floor. As the pedestal retracted, a large door began to open, big enough that I began to fear for what might come out of it. In fear or desperation, I know not which, I unleashed a single bolt of fire down the newly opened passage. As the bolt of fire passed through the new room, I noticed on the ground was a demon of great size. Who knows for how many years he lay there, trapped, and my foolishness has set him free. I turned to run, but the exit was closed, probably by the same mechanism that opened the demon's door. The demon began to stir, and I knew that I was in for a fight. I readied my shield and checked my armor, but I had a decision to make. My two best weapons were the Baronera Star I had found a few weeks earlier, or the Blood Moon Blade. I had to think fast, which one should I use to defeat this beast? So this next part of the puzzle is a rather simple one. It is a choice between two weapons. Um, obviously, in this situation, we're going to go to the weapon that we choose. Now, I already happen to know uh, which weapon is the correct weapon and which weapon is the false weapon. Uh, so we are going to choose the false re weapon really quickly, um, and that is Baronera's Star. 
So if you take a look at my Baron Air Star video, um, and again, down in the description, you will find a hidden link, which takes you to the next part of the puzzle. I chose Baron Air Star. It was a sturdy and very fast weapon with high elemental damage. I thought surely this would be the correct weapon for the job. No sooner had I removed it from my pack and readied it for combat than the demon finally stood up. I finally saw what he was. It was a pit lord. But not just any pit lord. This one seemed to be much stronger than any I had ever fought before. But I was not ready to submit to death just yet. I charged in as quickly as I could and began working on its legs, as this was unfortunately all I could reach. The size of this demon was massive, and I hoped by attacking his legs I could force him down where I could get a good hit on his head. No matter how hard I hit, it seemed as though this pit lord was taking very little damage indeed, almost as if he was immune to the elemental damage of my weapon. I was not, however, immune to his attacks, and as the battle continued, it seemed very clear who was going to be the victor. Every potion used, every ability brought to bear, but it was not enough. I slowly succumbed to the demon's blows and breath of fire. <laughs> so yes, uh, if you choose this path, you die. Uh, that is the end. Uh, the reason why Baronera Star was the inappropriate choice is because the Pit Lord is actually one of the Pit Lords from Uber Tristram. And those of you who have played know that Uber Tristram Pit Lords are immune to every single element except for physical damage, which means that the advantageous elemental damage that Baronera Star gives you is useless against the Pit Lord because they are immune to the fire, they're immune to the cold, and they are immune to the lightning. And uh, it was unfortunately the wrong choice. Now, the correct choice was the Blood Moon Blade, which, if you looked up the Blood Moon Blade, you would find a video. And again, down in the description of the video is a link to another unlisted video. Um, and this is the correct choice. I chose the Blood Moon Blade. <laughs> Hoping that it would keep me alive. The increased lifesteal of the blade combined with the use of the Blood Golem may provide the distraction I need to survive this encounter. I equipped the Blood Moon Blade and quickly summoned the Blood Golem to my side. Then the demon finally stood up, and I finally saw what he was. It was a pit lord. Not just any pit lord, this one seemed to be much stronger than any I had ever fought before. But I was not ready to submit to death just yet. I positioned myself on one side of the demon, while making sure my golem was on the opposite side. We attacked the pit lord's legs because, well, that was all that we could reach. He was so large. The pit lord seemed to largely ignore the golem, and it was to my great benefit as I slowly but surely took the pit lord's health away. Between the blood moon's lifesteal and the restoration granted to me by the blood golem, I was doing quite well. Slowly but surely, the pit lord grew weaker and weaker, and I was none worse for the wear. Finally, the pit lord fell to one knee, and I chopped off his head with one clean slice. Tired from my battle, I rested and noticed just how disgusting the blood golem really was. After a short rest, I began to look around. The room was rather uneventful. The pit lord had nothing of value on him, and the only thing I could find was a set of runes carved into a large stone on the floor. by what was seemed like claws. The runes read Lem Ist Io. And as I stroke my beard menacingly, um, it is supposed to be how you escape from here. 
Uh, so Lem Ist Io, uh, if we look that up on an actual, uh, like, runes, we try to figure out whether it actually has any kind of effect on a, uh, a rune word. It does not, because it is not actually a rune word. Um, so again, we are looking at another puzzle where we have to shift uh, the, the runes upward or downward to try and figure out what it is that we're looking at. So Lem can shift upward or downward to Fal, or it could shift to Pal. Um, Ist can shift f to either Mal or Gull. And Io can shift to um, Hell. Or could potentially shift to Lum. Now, there's no guarantee that this is not going to be shifted more than once. Um, and this is part of how things get trickier and trickier as you go along. Uh, but let's take a look and see just the one shift and whether that pulls up anything. Um, so the first thing we're going to look for is a rune word that starts with foul. Now, the easiest way to do this, quite honestly, is just let Google uh, be your friend and just type in foul mal hell into the uh, into the the Google. And, uh, you know, it doesn't pull up anything. So uh, we're going to try Paul Gullum. And looking at a whole lot of nothing. So we're going to try and shift this again. Uh, one more up and one more down, uh, just so that we can make sure we're getting uh, all the possible choices, because it could be shifted twice. Uh, so again, we're going to take Lem, and this time we're going to go up one more for Ko, and we're going to go down one more than Paul to Um. Uh, we're going to go down one more from, or, or sorry, <laughs> up one more from Mal to Um. And we're going to go down one more from Ko. Uh, Gull to Vex. And then same thing with Lum. Uh, down would be Ko, and up on Hell would be Dole. Uh, we have Um, Vex, Ko. That sounds familiar. Let's double check that. Can't type worth anything today. It's been so long that I can't remember. Um, but I do have a lot of different tools and things that I can use to try and figure things this out. So uh, one of the websites that I like to go to is a website called Diablo2.io. And uh, this is an easy way that we can solve a puzzle like this. Uh, for those of, you, those of you who are interested in solving puzzles, uh, let's take a look really quickly. So we go over to Diablo2.io, and we can uh, take a look really quickly by the number of sockets. So uh, right off the bat, one of the things that we notice here is that it is three runes. So we have very few three rune rune words. Um, when I say very few, I mean, uh, you know, not, not, not a super large amount. Uh, so we have Foul Mal L. So let's just do a quick search for Foul. We have... Lionheart is Hell, Lum, Foul. Although uh, Hell and Lum are not part of that, so that's not going to work. Uh, we also have... Not a lot of good choices here. So this one in particular is probably not correct. Uh, we also have um vex co. Of course, we can't search for multiple runes. Delirium lem ist. Io. Is that on our list? Oh, well, I'm a big silly head because, uh, look, see, I, I'm not even paying attention to my own clues. So uh, if we take a look at the original um, clue, you will see that the original clue is Lem Ist Io, and Lem Ist Io is Delirium. So uh, very simple as that. Uh, Lemist Io 
is the uh, Delirium Rune Word right there. So it wasn't uh, shifted at all. I tricked myself. <laughs> tricked myself, boys. Uh, which means that all we need to do now is go to the Delirium Rune Word. So let's take a look at, uh, at the Delirium Rune Word. Sometimes things are not as complicated uh, as I would have you believe. And I do that on purpose because in puzzles, especially in puzzles, um, you know, a lot of the times when it comes to a puzzle, uh, they may specifically choose a simpler answer just to kind of throw you off. And then uh, I used a lot of tricks, and I'll even trick myself, I'm sure. But here we go. Now we're on to the Delirium video. Let's take a look and see what I have to say. I knew these runes. They made the rune word Delirium. I think they were telling me I made the wrong choice. I tried to remember what Delirium did for you, both positive and the negative. I had never been lucky enough to obtain a Delirium helmet for myself. I thought about the fact that Delirium is meant to be a rune word that goes into a helmet, and I examined the head of the demon more closely. A hideous creature by all standards. Blood-red skin, misshapen teeth, eyes as black as sin that were lifeless now. But on the back of its neck, I saw the same runes tattooed. Lem, Ist, Io. Very interesting. I picked up the demon's head and I placed it on the stone with the runes for delirium. Just like that, the door to the demon's room began to close, and I ran and dove for the doorway, only barely making it in time before it slammed shut. I seemed to have gotten nowhere. There was no other passageways, no other runes or carvings on the walls, and the pedestal did not return. I had survived, but it would seem I chose the wrong path. I headed back up to try the other path, which I hoped would yield better results. So at this point, um, you have basically found out that this is the wrong path, um, and you have to take the previous path. So if we go and we take a look at the, um, the notes, um, earlier we had two different ways to go. We had the death rune word, and we have the wealth rune word. Now we did gain some uh, insightful information on maybe how to solve a clue in the future in the next series. Um, but we're going to go and take a look at the wealth rune word, and, uh, and we're going to have a look and see if um, we can find our way through there. So if we take a look at the wealth rune word, again, there will be a another hidden link down here in the description. It just simply says wealth. I headed down the right passageway, and inside there was a winding, terrible staircase. The steps were not the same height. Often one step would be so large I would need to climb down, while others were so small I felt like laughing. I couldn't help but wonder if it was on purpose. As I traveled down and down into the darkness of the mountainside, I smelled smoke and burning flesh. It was certainly not a welcoming aroma. As I finally neared the end of the stairs, I was greeted with what seemed to be a campfire with a horde of little demons around it that I recognized well. They are called the Fallen, and for as many as I have slain, there are stars in the sky. The real trick is making sure to slay the shamans first so they are not constantly being revived to fight again. After a quick but fierce battle, I had dealt with all of the murderous little beasts and started to search the room. It seemed to me that this was not always a camp for the fallen, but it was instead something much more grand. However, the fallen had desecrated much of it, pooping and peeing on whatever they wanted. I was unsure if I could make any of it out. After removing the fallen's decorations, I was greeted by a closed door. The symbols on the door were all too familiar runes. There were nine symbols in total in a grid of three by three. Starting from the top left and moving towards the right, the symbols were Nef, Lem, El, Ist, Am, Io, Zod, 
Lum, and finally, Co. Upon further examination, it certainly seemed like you could press each symbol. Perhaps they wanted me to put in a specific combination, but what could it be? A word on the top of the doorframe was written in a language I was actually familiar with. It was the word avarice. Now this was the only clue that I was given. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Didn't stroke your beard at me, sir. So this is a keypad, um, just like uh, you would have in a, I don't know, a security office or something, right? Um, so the keypad is essentially um, Nef Lem L Ist Am Io Zod Lum Co um, in that exact order from left to right, so you know exactly which keys that you have to press. And, uh, and the only clue that we have is the word avarice. Uh, so avarice is an interesting word, and if you look up avarice, um, perhaps a, uh, a definition of avarice, you will come up with several different clues. Um, you could, for instance, type in uh, avarice synonym, which is a rather easiest thing to do. Um, and avarice is apparently uh, a synonym, uh, acquisitive, covetous, grasping, greedy, um, a lot of different synonyms for the word avarice, um, covetous, hoarding, um, tight, gluttonous, money grubbing, predatory, selfish, a lot of very interesting synonyms. But what could that potentially mean for the code? What is our code? Well, again, let's go back to the rune words and let's take a look at all the different rune words that we have and see if any of them kind of fit with the idea of something, somebody who is money grubbing, somebody who is, who is going to steal, you know, whatever it is that you've got, right? He's a, he's, he has, he's a very avarice person. So we've got Ancient's Pledge, Beast, No, Black, No, Bone, No, Bramble, No, Brand, No, Breath of the Dying, No, Call of the Arms, No, Chains of Honor, No, Chaos, Crescent Moon, Death, Delirium, none of these really work. Destruction, Doom, Dragon, Dream, eh, just looking through the list, we've got quite a few different items here, but nothing really quite fits. Um... Honor, Ice, Infinity, no, Insight, no, Last Wish, no, Lionheart, uh, a bunch of these are not really all that great, are they? We have Passion, um, maybe, of course, we can always check, right? It's very easy to check, so so we could just simply type in Passion. I have, I have videos on every single rune word, so uh, very, very easy to do. You would take a look and see if there is a special link down here. Uh, and there is a special link for my chinchilla the mascot, but no special link for the video. So this is unfortunately not the one we were looking for. Uh, we have Peace, Phoenix, Pride, um, Prudence. None of these are really all that great. Splendor? Oh, no, I don't really think that one would be it. I mean, we, we already took a look at wealth, so wealth is definitely not the correct one. And... Um, oh yes, I just realized. There are some of the new rune words which are missing from this list, and one of them in particular does in fact line up with um, avarice. Uh, avarice could also be a synonym for obsessive. Obsessive, you were obsessed, obsessed about the item, right? So if we are obsessive, well, there actually is a new rune word that only just came out recently, uh, which we got some, some information on. So obsession. Ah, the new rune word obsession. So let's go down into the description of the new rune word obsession. And what do you know? We have a link. So let's take a look. After pressing the buttons Zod, Ist, Lem, Lum, Io, and Nef to make the rune word Obsession, the so the key here, or the clue here, was number one, Avarice is a kind of a synonym to obsession um, because a person is a money-grubbing, seeking, um, you know, just in general could 
<laughs> their entire purpose in life is to take money from others, right, and bring it for themselves. It's their obsession. So that was the first clue. The second clue, of course, is also that the runes. So the runes here can, of course, make the rune word obsession. So if you look up the rune word obsession um, and you were to kind of plot out what runes these runes could potentially make rune words of obsession is one of the new rune words which could potentially be created here of course you could press the zod key the ist key you could press the lem the lum the io and the nef so very 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 interesting that you could of course create the rune word here the door began to open the smell coming from the doorway's broken airtight seal was foul indeed I didn't think anything could smell worse than a room full of fallens defecating on everything they felt like, but this was without a doubt worse. I decided to retreat temporarily and let the new cave air out, finding what edible food I could from the camp of fallen after resting a bit and cleaning up my armor with the filthy rags, I made my way back to the door. The smell, thankfully, had diminished greatly, and I went inside. A couple sharp turns inside the door, and I was greeted with a very ill-conceived ladder made out of animal bones and primitive rope. It wasn't very tall, so I decided to chance it, and I was greeted immediately by a room with large statues of what seemed to be black knights. As I walked through the room, I could swear the eyes on the statues followed me as I walked around. Unnerved, I hurried to the end of the hall and was presented with a large stone coffin. Engraved in the top of the coffin were the runes Shale, Cham, Vex, Dole, and Jaw. I wondered what it could mean. The only other writing anywhere on the coffin was very simply the Roman numeral 2. I opened the coffin, but there was nothing inside. No bones, no gold, no weapons, not even dust. I checked the rest of the room, and it was empty. Nothing at all but these creepy statues that I could swear were staring at me. Ooh, they are staring at me. Actually, they're the uh, they're the Black Knights from uh, from Chaos Sanctuary. If you guys have never seen, uh, it's a, kind of an Easter egg. They actually do stare at you, so uh, it's very interesting. They, their heads actually follow you as you walk around. It's uh, they they came from Diablo One, so uh, that's why they're an Easter egg. So we've got two clues here. We have Shale Cham Vex Dol Jaw, which when you uh, check against the rune list and you work out into individual letters. Uh, S C V D J does not mean anything. Um, so we also have another clue, which is the Roman numeral I I, which is two. So uh, what that is supposed to represent is that in the previous puzzle you shifted one. In this puzzle, you are going to shift twice. Um, that's basically what the Roman numeral two means. Is it's going to allow you to shift two times instead of one time, which is which is fairly easy to do. Uh, we're going to shift up and down two times. Which is, uh, which is super quick. Uh, we're going to do Shale goes up to Am. Um, and then Shale can also theoretically go down to Hell. Uh, Cham can go up two times to L because it would have to cycle around past uh, Zod. And um, Cham could go down two times to B, which is uh, a Burr. Uh, we also have the Vex rune, which can go up twice to Ist, or it can go down twice to the Low rune. Um, and then we also have the Dol rune, which can go up twice to Io, or we can go down twice to... Or sorry, that's down twice to Io, my bad. Or... Uh, up twice to... I'm doing this terribly wrong, aren't I? It's a difficult puzzle, and it was never meant to be solved in a day. 
Um, and quite honestly, um, it didn't get solved in a day. It got solved in two days, which <laughs> which was not my intention either. Uh, you guys actually did really, really good. Uh, the person who solved the, the last puzzle, you have my uh, admiration because you definitely put in the hard work to get the puzzle solved, which was cool. Um, so here we have two that don't really mean anything. So using the first letter seems to be wrong. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put out the entire rune word. Um, so I believe it was... Um, Am El Io Sir Zod. Uh, this is Hell Burr Low Ist. Or is it Io? I can't hear it. Io Sir um, And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for a rune word and I may have done that wrong. I'm going to double check and then I'll come right back. Alright, so yes, I did mess it up. Um, so going up twice, which it was up, not down, uh, which is, is relatively easy to figure out. Uh, going up, not down, is uh, Amber ist Sol Sir. And if we take a look at a list of runes and rune words, uh, we will find that Amber ist Sol Sir is the rune word Eternity. Um, so we're going to take a look really quickly at the, uh, at the video Eternity. And down in the description, again, we have another link. Sweet. I finally decided on a course of action. I had deciphered the runes on the coffin, and it was, in fact, the rune word Eternity. I think what they were trying to tell me to do is to get inside the coffin and shut the lid. To pretend as if I would be staying there for all eternity. So I did just that. I climbed into the stone coffin, and I slowly pulled the lid to a close. I even got sound effects. And then waited for what I hoped would be something fantastic. But as seconds turned to minutes, and minutes turned to hours, I knew nothing was going to happen. How long had I been waiting in the dark for my intuition to be correct? I decided enough was enough and pushed on the lid to leave. The lid, however, had other plans, as it didn't budge. Even in the slightest, with all of my effort, I started to panic. I thought what an idiot I was climbing into this death trap, all because I thought that I was smart enough to discern the true meaning of the writing on the tomb. My panic turned to dread as I realized I would never make it out of this tomb. I couldn't even see my own hand in front of my face. It was complete and utter darkness. Pitch black. So here the clue that you're supposed to hear um, is the word black. Um, Black is a rune word that uh, is actually pretty popular, used by a lot of smiters and things like that. Uh, but uh, essentially, I'm stuck in darkness. Um, and black is, of course, another word that just simply means no light. And, uh, and here we go. So we go to the black rune word, and we go down to the, the bottom here, and you'll find another hidden link, uh, which just simply says black. And uh, this will take us to the next part of the puzzle. It was so dark in this coffin, so very dark. The utter hopelessness of it all began to sink in as I fumbled around in the darkness for all eternity. At least until I died from starvation and dehydration. I started to focus, to calm myself down. What good was it to panic? What good was it to let myself wallow in regret at a dumb mistake? After what felt like days, I saw a small speck of light. At first I thought I was hallucinating, but gradually the light was getting bigger and brighter with each passing day. 
It seemed as though I may have been right after all, but the cost was much greater than I had imagined. Most of my food was gone. At this point, I was beginning to starve to death. How much longer would it take? Would I make it to the other side of this trap? I wondered if I would have the fortitude to survive to the end. I rationed what I had left of my food in hopes I could survive until the end. So uh, the clue here in this video um, was that you were supposed to hear the word fortitude, which fortitude is another rune word in the Diablo 2 universe. And uh, so if we go and we take a look at uh, the fortitude rune word, we will find another hidden link uh, down in the description. And like I said, it just simply says fortitude. Finally, before all hope was lost, the hole that started off as a small speck of light became an opening big enough for me to slide out of. The room, however, I came into was not the room I was in before. The statues of the Black Knights were gone, and the room was altogether more polished and finished. The floors were made of a fine marble polished to perfection. White pillars rose to meet the ceiling, which too was cut and polished into various shapes and patterns. As you explore this intricate and beautiful area, you are reminded by your stomach that you barely made it out alive, and finding food is your top priority, lest you finally starve to death. So there are a couple different choices that you could make here. Um, there are a couple different words which would kind of lead you to the next choice. Um, the clue that you are supposed to understand here is that you are, of course, starving. Um, and there are several rune words in the Diablo 2 universe that could potentially represent a person who is starving. I chose to use the rune word bone, uh, which re represents, of course, skin and bones. Um, the reason why I chose bone specifically is just because that's the one I wanted to use. Uh, so if you take a look down into the description of bone, you will find skin and bones written down in the description of the video, which will take you to the next video in the puzzle list. Eager to prevent death from starvation, you search this new area in hopes of finding anything to eat. You don't know how many days it has been since you last ate, but you're sure it's been too long. As you explore, you do eventually find what seems to be a kitchen larder filled with all sorts of salted meats, wine, and dried fruits. Much of it seemed quite old and inedible, but I could hardly complain. It would prevent my death, and that is all that mattered. After gorging myself on food and wine until I could no longer eat, I found a nice place to sleep and curled up for a long nap. The silence was starting to get to me, and I wondered how long my strength would hold up. Had my greed gotten me killed? My mind raced to and fro as I slowly fell asleep. That night I dreamed of a fortune in gold so vast and wide that I could never spend it in my whole life. In my dream, I was so happy, and I felt as though I had become a king. So uh, there are several words here that could potentially be clues, but the one that you are looking for here is the word silence. Uh, silence is supposed to represent the meaning of this particular part of the puzzle. Uh, you found yourself in a very interesting area, but nothing is here. No one is here. There are no sounds. Uh, and even though you are here now, it still is just an eerie and crazy silence. Um, so we are going to look at the rune word silence. And uh, right off the bat, you will see I do have one up already. And down in the description, again, is the word silence with another link, which is very conspicuous, by the way. I didn't even upvote my own video. <laughs> and uh, let's see what I've got to say this time. I awoke the next morning. Was it morning? I had lost all track of time, and I began to worry about Nimoy, who I had left outside before entering. I had not planned to be gone very long, but now Nimoy had been alone for who knows how long. Poor Nimoy. He's been out there, no food, 
No water for days, weeks. Who knows how long we've been inside this dungeon. Hopefully he is safe and well. With my belly full and my pockets full of salted meats, I began exploring this dwelling. Dwelling it was, or is, as it was obviously a place a person was meant to live in. It was obviously a place someone spent great effort on to create. Intricate marble floors and ceilings that would impress even a king. The splendor of the place was just too magnificent for such an underground dwelling. How could something so amazing exist here, deep within the mountain? Why was there no one here at all? The splendor of the place. So what you're supposed to get here is the word splendor. This is a grand, amazing place. It is seems to have been made for kings. The splendor of it is is not lost on you. And, uh, and so now we look up the rune word splendor. And of course... In the description, yet again, is another link. Finally, I came across a room that had a mural along the wall. The mural seemed to depict some sort of epic battle between angels and demons. It seemed to go on forever. Sometimes the angels were winning, and sometimes the demons were winning. But it seemed neither side never quite got the upper hand. The mural seemed to go on forever, and slowly a new figure emerged in the midst. This time, I am sure it was a human. It seemed as though both the angels and demons wanted to use the humans in their never-ending war. The story of this war between heaven and hell, was it true? Who were these demons mentioned in the lore called the prime evils? One angel, above all, stood out. The mural called him Tyrael. So here you're supposed to infer um, a particular clue um, because we're talking about a story. We're talking about the the past, the the sin war, the the prime evils. It is the lore that we're supposed to get here. Now, several people actually did infer the second clue um, from this, and they moved on to that particular piece, but that was not the clue that I had intended, and, uh, and it was really just kind of a slip-up, but it didn't really give them that much of an advantage. They might have just simply skipped uh, one of the videos, which doesn't really do too much as far as the puzzle is concerned, but for the purposes of, uh, of linear progression, we are going to go to the rune word lore, uh, which was the intended next step for this particular puzzle. I wasn't in danger of death anymore, and this place was comfortable. I even found a bed to sleep in, but no way out. I decided to study the mural in detail and learn as much as I could. The more I learned, the more I began to understand of this mural. It depicted the Sin War. The dwelling I found myself in was apparently used by angels during part of the war a safe haven, as it were. Eventually, I discovered that there was an armory deep within this dwelling, one that was hidden because it contained weapons and armor of great power. One armor in particular was said to be crafted by the angels themselves, light as a feather, but strong as steel. I wondered if I could find this secret armory, and perhaps it could lead me out of this place. So the clues here um, are light as a feather. Uh, light as a feather is a clue that is supposed to lead you toward Tyrael's might. So in the previous video, you were given a idea of the fact that Tyrael might be involved. And then we are talking about a special armor, which is light as a feather. And if you know, Tyrael's might is, of course, a very light armor because it has the negative 100% effect on it, which means that it has absolutely no strength requirement whatsoever, which essentially means that if we are looking for Tyrael's Might, um, we're going to go to the Tyrael's Might video. And uh, if you go to Tyrael's Might video, you'll find another little link down here, very inconspicuous. <laughs> it just says Tyrael's Might. 
After much research, I was able to discern the location of the secret armory. Written in one of the books was a layout of the dwelling, and a blank spot on the map seemed highly conspicuous. Upon research, and using some rope to measure, it did seem as if a room was concealed between two rooms. I tried everything, pulling the books, twisting the torch sconches, searching for a secret button, but none of it worked. Then a wave of understanding washed over me. What does an angel need with a secret door? They probably just teleport in with magic. I grabbed the heaviest object I could and started smashing the wall where I knew the secret room was. It took me nearly all day to break through, but when I did, I was met with a beautiful blue armor, the likes of which I had never seen before. It was light as a feather, but more durable than the strongest of steel. My armor was heavy, bulky, and slowed me down considerably, so I put this armor on and found a renewed vigor. I could move faster, I felt stronger, and I was no longer cold. I don't know what else this armor could do, but I was already impressed. On a weapon rack was a blade that seemed to be made of crystal. I stood in awe of its amazing construction. This, too, would be added to my arsenal. So um, the item, the, the weapon that you see there, is made out of crystal. It's supposed to give you an idea of what you're looking at. You're in a building that is created by angels, right? You have literally found Tyriel's might, and inside of the armory of the angels is a crystal sword. And what is the most infamous crystal sword known to the angels? The one that was wielded by Iswal himself, Azure Wrath. So if we go to Azure Wrath's video, you will find that Azure Wrath also has a nice little inconspicuous link. On the rack, the weapon was sitting were the words Azure Wrath. I had learned about this weapon in my studies of the mural. This was a blade wielded by an angel named Iswal who betrayed heaven. I knew from the stories it was a mighty weapon indeed, and I quickly put it in my pack. I felt renewed like I was making progress for the first time in a long time. I had found the secret armory of the angels, and maybe, just maybe, I would be able to find my way out of here. Wearing the new armor, I noticed that certain things in the dwelling seemed to respond to my presence, almost as though it thought I was an angel almost as though the building was alive. When I approached the mural, a door began to open where the portal to hell was depicted. I went in, eager to leave this place, eager to check on Nimoy and to make sure that he was okay. Inside was a vast storehouse of gold, jewels, runes, and more. Everything I could have ever wanted in the middle of it all was a book very prominently displayed, as if the book was worth more than all the treasure in the room. Written on the cover of the book was the name Bulkathos, a name I knew well as one of the most powerful barbarians that had ever lived. Sorry, I'm counting my gold. So from this, you are supposed to infer... Bulkathos is involved in this particular genre as well, this particular, you know, uh, area of the, of the, of the puzzle. Um, and so there are quite a few items in the game that could potentially be Bulkathos items. Uh, one in particular, though, which is definitely something that belonged to him, was Bulkathos Wedding Band. So let's go take a look at Bulkathos Wedding Band, and we'll see what uh, Bulkathos Wedding Band has. So we're going to just type in Bullcathos. And uh, we've got Bullcathos Children, and we also have Bullcathos Wedding Band. So let's take a look at the wedding band. And then down in the description, aha, we have another video. Inside the book was a great many things. I learned a spell that would get me out of this place called Town Portal. 
When I cast the spell, as it was written in the book, a blue portal appeared, and on the other side I could clearly see the town that I last visited. It was dark there. It must be the middle of night. I had completely lost all track of time, so I was surprised to see that it was dark. I started throwing bags of gold and jewels through the portal as much as I could, and when I felt I had done enough, I stepped through the portal myself, book in hand. I was back in town. I was free of that accursed tomb and its rotten, salted meats. I took a deep breath of fresh air and felt the moonlight on my face. I hid the gold in some nearby barrels and went to the inn to see about getting a room. As I passed the stable, there he was, Nimoy, his coat all shiny, and he was quite fat. Looks like the townsfolk must have found him and brought him in. He looks no worse for the rare. Where? I will pay for his room and board later, for now I wish to sleep. In the morning, I will pour over this book and search for enlightenment within its pages. So um, in this puzzle, uh, you are meant to infer the uh, word enlightenment is the next clue. Um, enlightenment is actually a not-so-great rune word, <laughs> uh, which is one of the reasons why I put it on uh, enlightenment in the first place, uh, because I knew that you guys would probably not find it by accident. Uh, some people have come across some of my links by accident, which I do think is rather funny. Um, enlightenment. Uh, I typed that in terribly wrong, by the way. Uh, and if we go down into the uh, description of the Enlightenment video, again, we will find another link. And this is actually the last link in the series, uh, which actually is one in of... the morning with which is one of the uh, things that a lot of people actually managed to get to, which I was actually pretty excited about. Um, quite a few people made it to the last part of the puzzle, and uh, only one person has been able to solve it so far. But I'm going to solve it on camera for you guys today. Some hot porridge, a mug of ale, and Bull Cathos' book I read. The book seemed to go over Bull Cathos' whole life, from birth to death and beyond. Apparently, he was even a ghost, or some kind of spirit, after his body was long turned to dust. There was one I was unable to translate, no matter how hard I tried. It was written in runes, but it was undecipherable. It was written as thus. If... Sir, if, dole, <laughs> ist, io, ort, om. Having tried for weeks to decipher this on my own, I have decided to make a contest of it with the local townsfolk. Whoever is capable of deciphering the word ith, sir, ith, dole, ist, io, ort, om, will be given a reward of $1,000. If you figure out the message... Email me at gingergamingmentor at gmail.com. And I did give away the $1,000. Um, I gave it away successfully to, um, to Johan Vikmo. Johan Vikmo, congratulations. Uh, Johan Vikmo uh, figured out the puzzle by utilizing the fact that one of the letters was repeating. Um, it was probably the most obvious clue that I could possibly give was the fact that the ith rune repeats two times. Um, this is an indication of basically how to solve the puzzle. Now, in the previous puzzles, and I'm going to do this the correct way, um, in the previous puzzles, you were given quite a few clues. Uh, one of them was to shift the runes once. Another one was to shift the runes uh, twice. Uh, there were several of them that had to do with uh, with 
turning the runes into other rune words so that you could continue the puzzle. Some of them um, was the ability to translate out the first letter of the runes into other objects. Um, what you are supposed to do here is you are supposed to shift the runes um, and you are supposed to take the first letter of the runes to create a word. Now the word that I chose was a deliberately difficult word, uh, but it is one that could have been thought about through the lore. Um, there were several clues that could lead you to the answer, and I'm going to go over those clues now. Uh, number one is the inclusion of Bulkathos and the fact that this word is written in his book. So this word is written in Bulkathos' book. Uh, Bulkathos was famous for having uh, guarded the world stone. So that is a very interesting thing that you can think about with Bulkathos. Bulkathos is one of the original elders. Um, he is one of the people that literally guarded the World Stone against, uh, you know, the incursion. And uh, and so we have the World Stone. But World Stone is a very long word. We can infer by the number of letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, that it is much more than the number of letters that I have here. So probably not correct. Uh, so we have another uh, thing to think about. We have the angels. So the angels are involved. Uh, we know that Tyrael is involved. Tyrael is involved. Uh, we also know that, um, that uh, the Azure Wrath was stored in this particular place. So we also know that Iswal was involved. Uh, we have a huge mural that talks about the Sin War and all of the, uh, the things that are going on there. So we have a lot of interesting bits of information which are all kind of pointing in the direction of, you know, uh, Diablo. Uh, this is, you know, the story of Diablo 2. But what does this mean? Um, so let's try shifting it, and uh, we're going to shift it down, and we're going to shift it up, um, and we're going to have to shift it multiple times, multiple different ways, most likely, because I did not make this easy. And, uh, and if you made it all the way to the last puzzle, if you got all the way here, then you probably know that it wasn't going to be easy. Um, so assume that it's not going to be easy. All right, so now since I'm a cheater, I'm not going to translate the down portion of this because I happen to know that it is up, <laughs> since I'm a cheater. Um, so I know that it is one of the up directions, but which one is it? Uh, we can translate all of these out into their uh, respective uh, letter combination, right? So uh, the first one is E, L, E, S, M, H, R, V. That definitely doesn't spell anything. The second one is N, O, N, S, U, D, T G, uh, non that definitely doesn't spell anything. Uh, T V T A P S I I that definitely doesn't uh, spell anything either. Um, that's not good. So now uh, we go to the next one. E G E T L S E M that definitely does not spell anything. Uh, and then we have our last one, which is E I. E I E O R, or sorry, uh, O F A N U. So if you look at the last one, you'll notice that it kind of seems like it might actually spell something. Um, but E I E is definitely not a word, but we definitely do have of and we do have a new. Um, if you were smart enough to search for a new, a new D2R, you would have come up with something. Uh, the story of Diablo's creation, a new and the dragon. So a new is a dragon that uh, apparently, you know, was uh, the kind of like responsible for guarding sanctuary. Um, a very, very powerful beast. And, uh, and you could have learned all about a new and, uh, and what a new represented for the game. But that doesn't give you the answer. Um, to get the answer, you have to solve one final clue, which is that the I does not actually represent an I. And that is part of the issue. Um, so to show you this, I'm going to pull up the rune ist, which is what it translates out to. So if you pull up the rune ist and you take a look at the rune ist, you will kind of find out that the rune ist doesn't really 
kind of represent an eye. So let's take a look at ist and let's see what it could potentially represent. And here we go. I'm going to pull this up on camera for everybody. Oh, look, that's way too big. Um, let me bring that down a little bit. So what does uh, the rune ist kind of look like to you guys? It's a little wonky. It's a little crazy looking. But what does it look like? It looks like a Y. Doesn't it? It looks a little bit like the letter Y. So we're going to translate out our original assumption of the I. And we end up with the I of a new. So let's look and let's see what the I of a new is. We can search for the I of a new. And I'm pretty sure that if you search for the Eye of Anu, you will come up with a Wikipedia article um, that is revolving around Anu. And, uh, and in the Wikipedia article, you will come across a very specific entry. The very specific entry is literally talking about uh, the Eye of Anu. And uh, if we go through here and we look, it says, It is written that when it died... Anu transcended into a benevolent place beyond the universe, a paradise of which nothing is known. In the universe, as it is known, however, it is its legacy remained. The Eye of Anu, later known as the World Stone, remained at the center of creation as the foundation of all places, times, and possibilities. Anu's spine spun out into the primordial darkness where it slowed down and cooled. So the eye of Anu is literally the world stone. And if you had followed the clues, you would have basically seen that the eye of Anu was, of course, another word for the world stone. Bolkathos was the one who guarded the world stone. The word was found in Bolkathos' book. Tyriel was involved, and Tyriel, of course, knew about the world stone as well. And the world stone is a very important object in the world of Diablo 2. I did not obviously want to make the answer to the riddle the world stone because that would have been the first thing that people had guessed. The eye of Anu, however, is a term that a lot of people are not familiar with as far as the world stone's name. Um, I hope if you enjoyed the puzzle at any point during this puzzle, you could have paused it and you could have done the puzzle on your own. In fact, um, you know, if you just fast forwarded to the end, like some sort of madman looking for the answer, um, you still can go back and, and, and enjoy the puzzle. And if you get stuck anywhere along the way, feel free to, uh, to take a look at this video so that you can find the solution. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when it is a hour and 17 minute long video explaining a puzzle that I created, um, um, I think two months ago. And as always, keep watching.